Can a $10 Sony Blu-ray player I picked up at a charity shop sound the same or even better than a $300 Cambridge Audio and $3,000 Lingdorf CD players? I performed a single blind study to find out the answer, and yes, I have a definitive answer for you. Before we get too far down the rabbit hole, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell to be notified every time a video is born. Without further ado. Welcome back to MyCon Audio. So what inspired this whole thing was a comment I saw on my Discord channel, as well as the general opinion that all CD transports should sound the same. As long as they are all using the same external deck, people genuinely feel that a cheap mass market transport like a Blu-ray player can perform in the same way that a $3,000 CD player can when both are used as a transport. Now, according to logic, they should as they simply output a digital bitstream, but they don't. So to answer the question, do all CD transports sound the same? No. Now, if you disagree with me that much, this is the time to click off the video. However, if you are the least bit curious about the subject and want to discover how I came to my conclusions with such certainty, then stay a little while, fire up that coffee pot, and let's get into it. For this test, I'm using three CD players, a Sony BDP S5100, a Cambridge Audio AX C35, and a Lingdorf CD2. Here's a little more info on the test process itself. For the internal DAC stuff, we level matched them. I measured the output coming out of the speakers using a 440 hertz test tone CD on both, and they were 1.77 dB different. My preamp has two dB accurate steps, so they were level matched within 0.23 dB, which is really hard to detect. So that uh, helped a lot with confusing mic, uh, or making it more difficult, I will say. Uh, the, it was not a double blind test because I, as the uh, test runner, knew what was being done, but I had him close his eyes and plug his ears when I changed uh, sources so that he didn't know, and I took the notes so he wouldn't know which device was in use. Um, so that's what we did on that. On the uh, digital input, it didn't really matter because they're all the same DAC and we use the same volume on everything and there was no difference in level. Uh, for the initial DAC comparison, we used a, it was a well-regarded Chinese DAC at the time, and it, it measures really well, and it still sounds pretty good. It's not to the level of something like a hollow May, but it is pretty good. Uh, Yulong is what it was, the original Yulong uh, DSD uh, DAC. Anyway, that's what we did to do the comparisons, and. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, well, uh, I will let Mike go over the results with you. So to secure a proper test, I made sure I couldn't hear the drawers opening and closing and could not see what was going on, which was fine with me because I generally perform my audio evaluations with my eyes closed. It allows me to consume the sound much more analytically than just sitting and enjoying it like most you know, normal people do. Let's take a look at the results. The first round of this test, which was originally supposed to be the only study we did, had interesting results. The DAC used as reference is the Yulong DA8 DAC, and we used the same coax cable to connect each component. We kept everything consistent to prevent even the smallest variation or change in the signal chain beyond the CD player itself. The Sony BDP S5100 was tested first, and I felt the sound was just congested beyond what should be acceptable. It sounded like the instruments and musicians were literally on top of one another in the center of the room. That is not an exaggeration, it's just what I heard. The sound came off a bit bright and thin, not what I would describe as an overly enjoyable experience. However, the system we are testing these on is highly resolving, and if you were listening to this on a soundbar or entry-level system, you probably won't notice the subtleties that come across so blatantly with Mike's system. Next on the test bench was the Lingdorf CD2. Now, Mike switched these up quite a bit and tried to trick me, so I am compiling the notes from several different sweeps he did with the same device for just for time's sake. I found the Lingdorf to have a much wider sound stage than the Sony and just incredibly spacious in general. Nothing really about the frequency range jumped out at me as it did with the Sony's brightness. The low level resolution was fantastic, 
it was a nice demonstration. The final component tested was the Cambridge Audio AXC35. It came off a bit more forward in the mid-range in the Lingdorf, however, in this test, it actually had a bit of a nicer sound stage. Overall, I felt it was less detailed than the Lingdorf, but still considerably better than the Sony. It came very close in comparison against the Lingdorf using an external DAC, which is what I expected. However, each component did in fact sound differently. I cannot deny that I genuinely heard subtle but present variations in the sound quality amongst all three devices. But according to many of you, I shouldn't have. Logically, the DAC is doing all the work, so what's up with that? So that was where the whole thing was supposed to end, and I was going to bid you farewell. But I got curious. I wanted to know how the Cambridge Audio AXC35, the Lingdorf CD2, and Mike's Oppo BDP83 compared to one another when we use their analog output stage instead of the external DAC. It's a test to see how a $300, $900, and $3,000 CD player sound when compared to one another. I personally felt this was something you would all enjoy, so here we go. The first to be tested was the Lingdorf CD2, and it did not disappoint. The analog output stage on this player is insane. The dynamics were impressive, just a smooth and pleasant ride through the frequency range. The most important thing was that it was not fatiguing and it was just an enjoyable experience through and through. Clean, crisp detail, and, and as it did when we tested it earlier, I found it to be even more spacious than before, creating this incredible immersive experience. The Cambridge, eh, well, not so much. I was able to guess during the test that we were in fact listening to the Cambridge. It lacked spaciousness, it wasn't as balanced as the Langdorf. I found the sound to be a bit annoying. The mid-range was more pronounced and I felt the sound could be categorized as fatiguing. Just overall, mm, the final contender, the Oppo. This one was nice, a lot of people use this one. A narrower sound stage on the Lingdorf and a bit more forward, okay overall. I didn't find it fatiguing like the Cambridge, but it also didn't hold a candle to the Lingdorf. It was interesting how at each price point they performed pretty much as they should have. So the next time someone says a product punches way above its weight, ask them if they've compared it to something well above its weight. Overall, the Lingdorf CD2 bested the other contenders in both evaluations. Now, the real question is why? Why did it sound overall better in the digital out evaluation and considerably better in the analog out test we performed? Well, I did a bit of research and I want this subject to span out into another video so we can have a deeper understanding of this. I feel having a civil discussion about this is the best course of action. Now, the analog out evaluation is fairly self-explanatory. Quality of output stage, power supply, DAC, and just overall design and construction to lessen errors led to the results, mostly the DAC. In these components, when the DAC is different in design, engineering, and quality, there will be a distinct difference in the sound signature. The one I was curious about was the elephant in the room. Why did all those ones and zeros many of you feel I should have heard in the same exact way didn't? Various design techniques and engineering considerations are employed when designing the output stage of a CD transport to ensure accurate and jitter-free transmission of the digital audio signal. A more expensive CD transport can very well provide better sound quality due to a higher quality transport mechanism, superior error correction capabilities, cleaner power supply, better vibration control, improved output stage design. These factors contribute to the accurate reading and transmission of digital audio data, which ultimately affects the performance of the DAC and the resulting sound quality. I personally feel all of these factors are important when discussing what affects the performance and why I heard the difference I heard. I did a video about jitter a while back and after performing this casual test of my own subjectivity, I feel it's worth digging a bit deeper into the subject. I to, trust me, I was a skeptic at one point until I actually started listening and comparing. However, over time I realized that jitter really is a thing and when you take a CD transport with cheap parts mass market, it just can't have the same results as a transport built for superior sound quality. Were my results polarizing well between the Sony and the Lingdorf? Yes, absolutely. Was it more difficult to discern between the Lingdorf and the Cambridge? Yes, absolutely. Some of these differences are going to be quite subtle, which is why many deny its existence. If your system is not overly resolving, you probably aren't hearing a difference at all. I chose a system I knew would reveal it all. Now, is this worth the argument? Because there is a huge part of this hobby that will not agree with me. And that's fine because I know what I heard and I have some young ears. 
they're nice. When it comes to enjoying music, we've got to remember that it's all about personal preferences. We all experience and understand music in our own unique ways. I merely wanted to share with all of you my discovery and let you all know, don't let a more conservative budget put you off from purchasing the Cambridge or even the Sony. Not everyone's system is the same or equal. If it works for you, it works for you. This whole experiment was meant to prove to myself that not all CD transports are created equal, and I was able to answer my questions with the utmost certainty. In doing so, I felt obligated to share the results with all of you, and I hope you enjoyed the process. I will be following up this video in the next week or so with a guest that can add more to the conversation on the technical side on why a transport can sound different. Because as convincing as my demonstration here may have been, there is still a lot to unpack and discuss. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button with a baseball bat as hard as you can. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified every time I put out a new video. With all that said and done, I will see you on the next one. Take care.